I got a question about the amino acid phenylalanine and why we don't hear more about that in the biogenic amine space, because I seem to talk about that a lot here on the channel. So let's dive into that. Hey, I'm Dr. A. I've been teaching and researching and writing and practicing for many decades in the integrative and naturopathic medicine space. And this is a real common area that we talk a lot about because you can sometimes support people in their nervous system function and other functions through the use of amino acid therapies. So they're very popular. Phenylalanine is an amino acid that some people will take, but it sort of gets overshadowed sometimes by its cousin, tyrosine, because they tend to work in the same pathway. So why would we have phenylalanine and tyrosine in the same pathway from a biological point of view? And would it make any difference if I took phenylalanine versus tyrosine to help out with the neurological or biogenic things that those amino acids do? So let's get into that. So we talk about this all the time, just the short version. An amino acid is the smallest divisible molecular step in making peptides peptides, and then you make a lot of peptides become protein. So that's the first thing. They're a piece of a peptide or a piece of protein. The next thing is that phenylalanine can be used for a number of things, but in a biogenic amine area, it is actually a precursor to a couple of other steps, one of which is very famous being tyrosine. So it comes before tyrosine, and then tyrosine goes on to make dopamine and norepinephrine. We call those the catecholamines. Now, if you want to be uber specific in the peripheral nervous system, we also make epinephrine there. Mostly in the central nervous system, it's dopamine and norepinephrine. So I could put tyrosine in. We got a lot of tyrosine content because people ask a lot of questions about that and help out with my catecholamines. And then I could also go upstream one and put phenylalanine in. So why would there be a difference? Would I want to do that? Would it make any difference for me? So the first thing is that yes, phenylalanine, if you raise your phenylalanine levels by supplementing with the amino acid phenylalanine, you will have a downstream effect of increasing tyrosine and usually dopamine and norepinephrine. A lot of people then would say, well, clinically speaking, why don't we cut out the middle amino acid, you know, upstream and just give people tyrosine and not worry about the upstream phenylalanine? Well, for some people, we certainly do that because it's more direct. But a lot of the charts that you see, and now, of course, you know, with the internet, you can look up you know, phenylalanine, tyrosine metabolism, you find, you know, a hundred different images and they all have little differences sometimes. Phenylalanine also has some fates biologically that are not the same as tyrosine. And so in some people, especially people in chronic pain, where they might need catecholamine support, but they also have chronic pain, phenylalanine will help them more with the chronic pain and catecholamine support than just giving tyrosine alone would. In some people, if they have a lot of like inattentive, you know, ADHD spectrum, that sort of thing, a lot of problems there, then they will sometimes need to use both, some phenylalanine, some tyrosine to satisfy all of the main and collateral pathways. So the time that I often think clinically to use phenylalanine is in somebody with sort of a mixed case where, yes, they appear to have some need for extra catecholamines, maybe due to focus, et cetera, maybe chronic fatigue, all sorts of things, but also they have a layer of a chronic pain syndrome. And it's not to say that phenylalanine Phenylalanine will make the person's chronic pain go away, but it can decrease their pain scores. So in a mixed case like that, where there's some chronic pain and maybe some fatigue and focus issues, I may start with phenylalanine, see how they do for a month, mess with the dose a little bit, and then transition them. And if they're still needing more help with the mental focus part, I might add some tyrosine in. So what would be the clinical benefit to just doing one or the other or a mix? The first thing is the less pills a person has to take, the more likely they are to do it. So if I can get the job done with just phenylalanine or just tyrosine, it's better to just use one. But as I say, and people are chronically ill, if there's a pain component and it comes with an inattentive or a fatigue component, I'll try phenylalanine alone. And if that's not enough, I'll add tyrosine or sometimes vice versa if there's just the fatigue and the inattention component. But in some people, they will wind up needing both. Now, the next question that comes up here is, 
is, well, if these things are triggering to the catecholamine formation in the body, are there any safety issues that we want to consider? Well, the first thing would be if you start to take them, and this is when we give dosing advice to people, we always say, look, if you start to take these and you feel shaky or like you drank a pot of coffee over kind of over revved or something, that's a, too much of a dose for you. So regardless of what we told you to start out at, you're going to have to back off on the dose. Give us a call. The next thing is if you're on any catecholamine manipulating drugs, you should only take catecholamine upstream amino acids in concert with a prescriber who is used to doing both. Catecholamine manipulating drugs might be for people, say, with Parkinson's disease. That's one area. But the big area that they're used are the stimulant drug strategies, which are often used in the ADD, ADHD spectrum. So the stimulant category of drugs, again, you could see if I have a drug that's holding on to catecholamines in the synapse, you know, like a lot of the stimulant drugs do, and then I put in a whole bunch more phenyl alanine or tyrosine, maybe I would get too much and I'd feel overstimulated. So if you're working and you're trying to do in concert with stimulant drugs or Parkinson drugs, et cetera, you want to make sure that you're letting your prescriber know and asking their advice about that. But let's say there's no drugs being used and you're just using it to try and help with fatigue, focus, maybe pain. People and their tolerance for phenylalanine is all over the map. Some people, we usually have them do a test dose at 500 milligrams in the morning. Normally people will say that's fine and they might go to a thousand or more milligrams. We'll have them ramp up until they feel it and get some effect, not, not shakiness and all that, but you know, some effect in their brain. And then sometimes after a few months, they take less and less because they're getting, you know, more saturated in the nervous system. If you reach a dose that makes you feel over caffeinated or you're not sleeping well, or you're jittery or something like that, then you really want to make sure that you talk to whoever is helping you with the prescribing of it and back off on the dose. The final thing is more of a practical matter, and that is with amino acids, they are absorbed into the blood directly with transporters. There's amino acid transporters. But the more amino acids that are in the digestive tract at the same time, the more competition there is. So you will get a different effect usually from say a thousand milligrams of phenylalanine if you take it on its own with a glass of water or a glass of juice or something versus if you take the phenylalanine along with a big high protein meal. Why would that be? Because you're now trying to digest and absorb all of this other amino acid from the high protein meal. It's going to decrease the amount of phenylalanine from the supplement that gets into your system. So when we're trying to do these things therapeutically, usually we'll do the stimulating ones in the morning. So I have people do their phenylalanine like at uh, when they first wake up and before lunch, or maybe just when they first wake up. Generally, we don't have people do that at nighttime. Some people tolerate it, but most people will keep them awake. All right. I hope that answers the phenylalanine question. We love all you new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. Comment, like, share, do all the stuff. It's really helping the channel. The channel's growing all the time, and that's because of you guys. We love it. And I will see you on the next video, but take a look here. We're going to put some other ones up to uh, watch in the meantime time.